Well, welcome back, everybody. We're beyond looking now at Case Blue, and I decided to start the game off and see how things work out. So, kind of get me back into the swing of things. It's been a while, although I played uh, Good Air and Splits Creek 2 just a couple of months ago as a little refresher for myself. I thought I'd kind of run through. Uh, a series of moving a few units, assuming that we've already placed some aircraft as part of our movement. In the very first turn of the campaign game, and in fact in most of the scenarios, uh, depending if they, they start at the very beginning of Case Yellow, uh, the Germans get a turn without a responding turn from the Allies. So that's the situation we have in turn one here. We've got uh, a whole swag of units here that they're going to move, but we're just going to focus on a, a core handful here and do some hip shoots and see what happens. And I had to, you've got to do a little bit of thinking with OCS in terms of the sequencing of your movement. And I've found that it's important to uh, you know, think that through and be uh, gracious with yourself and allow yourself to have a few mulligans here and there because uh, it's really not a game where you can think through all of the options, uh, at least well, maybe you can think through all the options, but I can't think through all of the options for every unit uh, on the board in every circumstance. And so what we're gonna do here is uh, is try and muddle our way through things. So I put a little bit of thought into this and the initial, this unit that was placed here, you can see it's Belgian, uh, it's random placement. And that's one of the locations that it could end up in. So it's right in the middle of the historical uh, kind of path that the, the Germans took rolling through here. And I think uh, you just can't see, it's just off the board here, but Sedan is here, and this is Liege here, so that gives you a feel for, this is the Ardennes uh, forest. Um, anyway, so I fueled up uh, this division, the first Panzer, and we've got a little Panzer Corps, uh, Panzer Division counter, uh, it's fueled. And I also took the liberty of fueling all of the surrounding units that were within, were within range of this particular, well, actually, this headquarters here. He has a 10 movement point, uh, truck movement point throw range. And so we activated, or not activated, but we uh, fueled up all the guys that were within his range, and that uses up just one supply point. And that means that the first thing we can do is take this unit here, and move him 14 hexes <coughs> on the trail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, to there. And that allows us then to conduct a hip shot, a hip shoot. And I already rolled for that, and we got a DG. And that guy now goes back to the inactive uh, pile. And this, we're going to have a holding box. There's an off-map holding box, uh, which is basically off-map airfields. And we're going to pop those uh, 88s or 87Bs back, the Stukas back in uh, Germany. This is our German border here. So now that I have a unit, I had a unit adjacent there, we can get that uh, DG result. And I can move my uh, first units up. And if I've counted correctly, I believe that uh, we will we will uh, get the appropriate result here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half to here. That's eleven and a half to attack that hex. So we're well within the range, and so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, rather than me, uh, you watch me do all this, I'm using a little application, uh, just a browser-based application, but you can also download it from the web as well, uh, to do the combats. And so I've got two, four, six factors. So we, I'm just gonna put uh, six factors in, and these guys are halved because they're disorganized and they have, so they have two factors. I got my pudgy fingers, hang on a second. It sideways, and we have uh, ARs of five. So 
So let's just choose those. And these guys have an AR of three, but it's down, uh, it's actually down one because it is disorganized. Now it's in wooded and hill terrain, which is considered to be very close terrain. And we are conducting an overrun. All right, and there's no hedgehog. So we're gonna submit that. And this is gonna give us the uh, probability of our uh, results. So if we're gonna go conduct this attack, <clears throat> I can take a quick look here and go, oh, okay, uh, I've got a 26% chance of uh, uh, taking a loss and uh, enforcing a loss and a retreat. So I like, uh, this is a cool little tool that lets us, uh, lets us go through that exercise. Uh, obviously, you're going to be far more interested in the actual result. So let's just uh, work that out real quick and we'll be back in a second. Well, welcome back. We ran the results on this attack and uh, we were successful. However, uh, what I did forget to do is that because we're attacking in wooded hills, our armor units are halved on the attack. So, uh, like I said, lots of opportunities for mulligans in this game. So we bring up an extra combat factor and quite possibly should have used significantly more factors. Uh, nevertheless, it becomes a two to one, but that means I now have a 21% chance of taking a loss and the defender has a 62% chance of taking a loss. So significantly different odds. And we rolled and ends up with an attacker option one, which we have to take in an overrun, I believe. And the defender loses one and has an option. Uh, there's only one step, so there's nothing we need to worry about in terms of the options. So we advance into the X and I have to take a loss. And we actually will lose that uh, single step uh, unit. And they're the first losses for the game. So we'll pop those guys into the dead pile. Right. Now these guys uh, can now continue the movement and continue movement. And they can actually make it up to this town here, plus uh, here, plus half a hex, another hex, I should say. So one of these three hexes. Um, We'll probably uh, just sit right, uh, actually we'll probably we'll just stay on the road and keep that town. So you just saw your first live combat in TBL. And now we're going to move uh, the next guys. And with that in mind, we're now very nervous about uh, the next planned attack. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're going to be barraging that later, but we're going to park there for the time being. Now, uh, I was going to do, I was going to split this stack into two different stacks and attack these guys as well. We're not going to do that now because of that uh, combat modifier that we need to make for uh, the um, for the train. So the next group of chaps we're going to move up. I'm going to uh, fuel up second panzer and pop uh, where are we? Squeak, squeak. Put that down to a three. If I have any. I'm gonna drive you nuts. Where do we go? Where were we? Yeah. And we're going to move 
second pantry. Okay. to there and you know what I'm just gonna stop the video for the moment and we'll be back in a little bit we're gonna move the uh, seventh and the fifth panzer in just a minute but I thought it might be uh, worthwhile providing a quick recap without knocking any of the units um, <coughs> we move 10th 7th and 1st Panzer divisions up. We split uh, the first probably a little too far. I could have really moved the second up over here, but they were kind of the guys that were uh, trying to eliminate unit. There was one unit here that we had to eliminate, and so they kind of cleared the path. And then we've got these two guys moved up in position to attack uh, here <coughs> uh, this turn, and we also brought the the Kleist group up, which has the Lehr uh, regiment and the uh, Grosse Deutschland regiment in it. We strat moved a significant number of units. We popped out some breakdown units to provide some flanking cover protection, just in case. And we're kind of pushing up this way a little bit as well. Didn't really, uh, we moved a few pieces forward here, just trying to try and pin uh, forces in place if that's at all possible. I don't think it will be though. So the main thrust of the uh, effort so far in the Ardennes is going to be right through this area. If we can crack this guy this turn and we get the double turn that will leave the 10th Panzer and uh, some of these other forces here, 6th Panzer, to be able to press through to the Sedan. And that then is uh, green fields beyond in essence. <clears throat> over on this side over here we're just getting ready to uh, hip shoot this unit here and then, and then we'll bring the 7th and 5th up uh, and, and put some pressure on the liege area which is right here so as I was saying before the camera died on me uh, we need to be fairly careful with the cable so we don't knock all our strat move guys around but we just rolled uh, this hip shoot on this particular unit here took a 10 which will probably DG him he's in very close terrain we lose a column for that let's see the chart uh, we have a unit adjacent so that helps uh, it's 12 combat factors yeah so we lose one column to the left we have a spotter no one's in strap mode, so yeah, that 10 on the 8 to 11 column is in fact going to be a 1-2, which means we have a chance, a 50-50 chance of, of killing a step, which would be awesome, so I'm going to roll the die. And uh, we rolled a 1, which is no good, so we don't uh, do anything. If we had to roll a 4 or 6, that would have taken out a step. So I'll come back to you guys in a minute, and we'll keep going from there. So we've got the end of turn one, and I thought I'd just run the camera across the board so we can get a bit of a feel for what's going on. And we're starting down uh, at the uh, southern end of the map. And uh, let's see, so as we cruise up into the Ardennes, you can see a pretty light push here. Lots of units in strat mode all trying to rush up this main road here and a couple of disappointing attacks uh, fighting this little cavalry, two little cavalry units or an armor car unit and a cavalry unit and then we, uh, so that kind of bogged up 10th um, and 2nd Panzer and the 1st as well as along with Kleist's group they're all in there and 5th is waiting as well for a clear road to shoot through at and um, we're just gonna have to battle it out next turn so we will not be making the infamous Guderian run through Sedan unless things clear up in turn two and we get the sequence correct alright as we move over to Liege we made a couple of abortive attempts at some very mild attacks 
on liege. Nothing too exciting. Uh, we use the commandos here, uh, where that DG counter is, to uh, try and blow away a fort there to no avail. So we so we attacked it and managed just to reduce one step. Uh, it's going to take a while, and that's why World War One sucked. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we had a real nice breakthrough somewhere here at this little bridge point, and that allowed us to exploit our units, the 20th Motorized uh, and 4th Panzer and 3rd Panzer all just raced into here, picked up Eindhoven, uh, couldn't get that in the first uh, the movement phase but we picked it up by the end of the turn and we've got some units kind of tagging out all the way up to uh, the nether regions of Belgium and if we, uh, in fact that might actually, yeah that is Belgium and then further up there, we've got uh, all the uh, airborne troops and paratroopers have landed and uh, tried to position themselves as best we could. We've got the SSV up there, uh, ready to take on the hapless Dutch next turn. And we've moved some forces up through here. So overall, uh, not a bad turn, nothing particularly stunning. Had a few setbacks on uh, die rolls, and we'll see what happens with the... Um, <clears throat> with the initiative roll for the next turn, that'll really be the telling tale, I think, as to you know how whether this turns into a slogging match or a very dynamic um, maneuver game. Okay.